Hello everybody, welcome back to Five Fuel Junction and we've finally got another review for you today. Uh, we haven't had a review for a little while now, but we're finally back, we've finally got another one. And today we've got something rather special for us to look at. As we can see, uh, today we've got the Royal Train for us today. Now, uh, before we get into it quickly, um, obviously Hornby have done, um, they have done a few different Royal Train packs, I'm pretty sure. Obviously this is one of them, as we can see, um, but they've also done a few. They've done, I think, a couple of train sets as well. Um, which I have looked at. I have looked at one of them, which included um, Princess Elizabeth, uh, one of the Princess Royal class uh, locos, um, number 6201. And that was one of the train sets the Hornby did, which I think came out probably around the same time as this, maybe slightly before this one, actually. Um, but both locos are similar tooling. And again, I'll talk more about that, about that later. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few packs um, the Hornby have done that includes, obviously, well, they have the name of the Royal Train, and to contain these coaches as well. Um, this particular pack um, obviously contains, as we can see, it contains a very nice um, example of uh, Duchess of Sutherland, um, obviously a Duchess class uh, loco, uh, 6233. Um, but um, again, yeah, if you want to get um, the Royal Train or or different or different, or you don't want this particular one, you want another one, um, there are a few different ones out there. And again, I obviously have looked at uh, one of those a little while ago. So if you want to go and check out the video on that, and then feel free to. Um, obviously the coaches that you get in this set, um, I'm pretty sure these are the easiest coaches to get uh, for the Royal Train. Um, as well as Formby have done uh, quite a few different coaches for the Royal Train, I'm pretty sure they haven't um, produced the full length of Royal Train. Um, uh, so that I don't, I'm pretty sure you can't um, cr um, create the full um, realistic length to Royal Train um, with the coaches that Hornby have produced. I'm pretty sure there are um, a few or a couple or so that Hornby haven't done. Um, but obviously they have done these they have done a few um these particular ones i believe it's the queen's saloon uh the uh, king saloon or like the queen or like something like that and then you've got some um, a um i think like a court, royal courtage coach something that's what the mark two is some, something like that so i could be wrong um, but it's something like that um these are the exact same coaches that you get um in the train sets the hornby have done as well um, with 6201 princess elizabeth so I have got um, duplicate coaches of these now. I've obviously got two sets of these. Um, but Hormi do do um, another coach pack, which includes another set of these, but they are different running numbers. And if we just turn um, the box over, there we go. You can see there the Royal Train coaches. So there's also this pack that Hormi did. Um, obviously, these models are um, quite old now. Um, but they obviously, they have done this pack as well. So you can add on... Um, to this particular pack if you want to or add, add on to the rule on or the train sets the Hornby did as well and as you can see um, they're different running numbers um, so the running numbers in this pack um, are 2021, 209, uh, 2903 sorry and 2904 and then these are the coaches that come in this pack as well obviously they, whilst they do look similar they are different running numbers and they are different types of coaches if you like as you can see, they're the Royal Household Dining Car, uh, well, not Dining Car, Royal Household Car Mark III Coach number 2918, and Royal Household Car Mark III Coach number 212919. Then we've got another one of the Royal Household uh, Corchette Coaches as well. So, yeah, so that's that's what I meant. That's what the uh, Mark II was. Um, so, yeah, so if you want to um, build up this full rake, then you should be able to. However, this particular pack. Um, it does seem quite hard to get hold of. I haven't seen any recently, so getting hold of this particular pack may be quite hard. Whilst getting hold of this particular one that we have here, um, which obviously includes these, which, well, if you just get rid of those, um, obviously it just includes this. And um, this particular pack does seem to be relatively common. There was quite a few on eBay when I picked up this one. Um, so if you want to get this particular pack, then you should be able to fairly easily. Um, but getting hold of these coaches, um, and I'll probably try and get them at some point. Um, these might be quite a bit harder to get hold of because I haven't seen any um, come up recently and they don't seem to come up very often when they do. Um, but if you do manage to get hold of them, then <laughs> obviously that's very, very good. Um, it's very, it'll be very nice to have them. Um, but if you can't get hold of them, then keep an eye out. Hopefully a set will come up at some point. And then obviously, apart from those coaches, Hornby obviously have done, um, they've done the sleeper coach and the buffet coach, of which I have both of. Um, obviously, both of those coaches are rare. The buffet coach is the rarest of the lot, um, so both can go for quite a bit of quite a bit of money. Um, luckily, I was able to get um, the buffet coach um, for quite a bit less, relatively re around half price of what they usually go for, um, mainly because it has um, had a new, new coat of varnish applied by a previous owner, 
um, so it's much more glossy compared to the uh, factory finish of the other coaches. Um, but at least I managed to get managed to get one, which is good. And the sleeper coach, um, I managed to get for a, a relatively decent price as well. Um, still too expensive um, for what the coaches are because they are relatively basic toolings. But at least I managed to get them, and they do seem to come up every now and then. So if you want to get those as well, then you should be able to. And obviously, putting that aside, we need to focus on what we've got here today. So obviously, as we can see, the locomotive, it's Duchess of Sutherland. Um, obviously, this particular loco is still running. Um, one of the reasons I got this pack, partially obviously because of the loco, um, Duchess of Sutherland is my most seen steam locomotive uh, at the moment, so at the time of filming anyway. Um, and I really do like it. It's a very nice, a very nice loco, a really, really nice uh, piece of engineering. Um, really do love it. Definitely like it more than the Scotsman, <laughs> um, although I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very nice loco. Really uh, looks really, really, really nice. The LMS uh, livery on it um, is beautiful. Uh, really, really nice livery. And obviously the coaches. Um, well, they sort of. Well, the coaches. Also, I don't really need because I already have these particular ones. But I'll keep. I'll happily keep them for now. I'll still run them with the rest of my Royal Train coaches. Um, at least until I get can get that um, other coach pack, and then I will probably sell these on or something or whatever else. <laughs> I don't. I'm not too sure, but I'll do something with them anyway. And um, then obviously this particular pack. It is a quite a quite an old pack. Um, Hornby don't do it anymore. Obviously, um, they haven't done it for a lot for a very long time. Um, I'm not too sure w when Hornby released this this particular pack. Um, I'd estimate it's probably around 15 years old or so, something like that. Um, but luckily, this particular one has never been ran. This particular one has never even been out of the box, um, which is quite nice. So obviously, she will need running in, um, before we um get her hooked up to a train properly and see what she can really do. Um, she might need a service as well because obviously she's been sat in a box for a very long time um, without any movement whatsoever. Um, so she might need some oil, she might need clean, uh, but we can have a look at that later. Um, but um, she should be fine. Um, obviously this particular, this particular tooling um, it is a relatively old tooling, um, but it's still it's fairly modern. Um, she's not DCC ready though. Um, she will need hard wiring um, with a chip so that I can run her on DCC, um, but that'll be done at a later date. I can still run her on analog for now, which will be fine. Um, but yeah, over, overall, um, it's a, a very nice looking pack. Um, the box um, is in relatively good condition considering it's been probably been in storage for a long time. Um, if we look at the on the side of the box, we get a, a bit of a nicer photo there of the uh, train itself. Uh, so obviously, when you get it out, um, but overall, there's not too there's not too much um, not too much information on it actually. Um, again, it's got a bit more of information there about uh, this particular pack, and I think the raw train itself as well. Um, it's got a nice photo there, which has the, the loco with some sort of headboard in the front. So maybe there's um, a headboard inside as well. Um, I don't know if the loco will come fitted with it or not, but um, hopefully that will be included because that will be quite nice. Um, but overall, I hope we need to open her up and have a look. Um, so if we just do this flap at the end, and there we go. Now, I haven't had her out of the box yet. So um, I have opened the box just to ha very quickly have a look at her, um, but I haven't taken her out of the box yet. So this will be the first time she has ever been out of the box, which is quite something, I think. Ooh, there we go, quite a big box, quite a bit awkward. But there we are, then we can lift up uh, this white flap if we can. There we are. And then we can see the logo at the top there. So first of all, we've got the instructions for the Duchess class. So it's locomotive and tender, and you can see they're quite old instructions. Um, so it's typical stuff, um, running in, uh, general maintenance, track cleaning. So yeah, we're all used to this, I think. So inside, we see there's lubrication. So you want to lubricate the valve gear to make sure that's running nice and smoothly. And you've also got um, the cog there underneath that's uh, easily accessible. Um, it is exposed. So if you want to put some oil on there, which I might do before I start running her in, um, that's, that'll be nice and easy to do. Uh, removing the body shell, so you've got the speedo there to that you'll need to remove. Um, so that <laughs> I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to do that now, which is gonna be well when I come to DCC her anyway. I'm gonna have to do that. And that's gonna be interesting because I don't really have the exact tools to do that, but uh, I should be able to do it. Uh, replacing the motor, should you need to, which you shouldn't really need to do, um, but it does happen. But these motors they last for a very long time. If you look after your locos, keep them clean, keep them serviced and just look after them, they, they they will last you a lifetime, they really will. Um, we've still got trying locos from the 1950s and 60s that are still running on their original motors, um, or the trying is bulletproof, pretty much. Um, but yeah, typical stuff there. And they've got to talk about removing the uh, remove the rear bogey as well to get to the motor, that's quite interesting. And on the back, uh, just TV suppression there, so yeah, all the typical stuff we're used to that. 
Uh, so where do we start? Well, I think we'll, we'll quickly lift out the tender first. Be really, really careful with it. Just gently lift it out. It's a bit of a tight fit. Oh, there we are. Uh, wrapped in the typical warm tissue paper. So we'll get rid of that. We'll put that in the bins. I won't be using that again. So yeah, quickly look at, we'll look at the tender in more detail a bit later. But yeah, it's typical um, Hormi tender from like around this age. Um, fairly heavy. Um, obviously, it does have pickups on it uh, to help aid the locomotive, um, which is good. Um, there are a lot of um, brand new locos today that don't have that. So it's nice to, ha nice to have them. And I knew I knew it would, so I'm, so quite, I'm quite familiar with this particular tooling, uh, considering that I do have... Um, obviously, uh, Princess Elizabeth, Elizabeth number 6201, which is the exact same tooling as this. Um, but yeah, overall, it's not a bad tender. Again, good weight, um, livery is applied quite nicely. Um, but we'll look at it in more detail in a moment. Now we need to grab the locomotive. Now, this is going to be the interesting part. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Ooh, bit of polystyrene there. There we go. Yeah, this packaging, it's, it's just rubbish. It's not very good at all. You can see the, this polystyrene has been absolute polystyrene. This tissue paper has been absolutely straight to bits. <laughs> we'll just put the locomotive to one side for now. We'll get rid of all this packaging because we don't need it. And I've just noticed there's a bit of polystyrene in the cab as well. So that's to protect it. Got the sum underneath the, the front bogey as well. God, they really have gone out all out on this. I'm not sure how we're going to get that out. <laughs> I mean, oh, that step's just fallen off. That's all right. We can put that back on in a moment um, if we need to. It might need gluing back on, actually. I'm not too sure. Okay, right. I'm just going to cut the footage for a moment, and I'll try and remove that uh, piece of uh, polystyrene off camera. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're back. Here we go. Here we are. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, that I had I had to get rid of that um, piece of polystyrene. I'm like, I, wouldn't, I just couldn't have left that in there <laughs> whilst, whilst we were doing the review. But as we can see, I managed to get it out. So it was a little bit awkward to do, uh, but at least it's out of the way now. Um, I still haven't put that step back on. Um, it's still in the box, actually. Um, if I just, just grab it, it looks like it should uh, go back on uh, fairly easily. Um, if I just have a look for a moment. Um, no, it looks like it is going to need gluing back on, I think, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like, yeah, that step um, has unfortunately snapped off. Uh, we can see there, that's where it should be glued on, um, but it has unfortunately come off. Um, but I think that's partially due to the packaging. Uh, but it's not very good plus these steps they are a bit flimsy in fact that other one is quite flimsy actually uh, so yeah that's that's a bit unfortunate to be honest um but i can glue that back on no problem um but yeah that is a bit of a shame that she is she has got a bit a tiny bit of damage um again she is quite old she has been in storage for a while um but yeah that is a bit of a shame to be honest um but putting that aside overall uh, she's not bad she does look really really nice uh, we've got some nice uh, lamps on the front. Um, they don't light up, unfortunately, but they look okay. We've got one on the top as well. Uh, we can see her running number as well, uh, 6233. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, we've got her nameplate as well. Oh, this front bogey is not playing ball. There we are. We've got her nameplate, Dutch, Dutch to Sutherland. Um, I'm pretty sure um, this is, well, because of when this, mo this particular model was released, um, she is ever so slightly different now. She does have... And I think like the crown and stuff um, on the side as well. I think it's either, I think it's below the nameplate, I think it is. Um, she does have like a crown on either side um, of there. Um, but I suppose I could add that in the future if I wanted to. Um, the livery application is very, very nice. Everything's been uh, applied really well. Um, the wheels and linkage, just look at that. It'd be good to see all of that going around um, when, we get, when we get a running. Uh, the front bogey um, turns quite nicely. Um, I think those steps might be slightly in the way, but I'm not too sure. Um, it might be fine, actually, but um, they do hang down quite a bit. Um, but I doubt they'll be in the way. Um, she has got sprung buffers, Ooh, <laughs> although they don't want to spring very much. There we are, they're not too bad. Um, it's just that one there's a little bit stiff, um, but I'm sure that'll be fine. Uh, the safety valves uh, look very, very good. Uh, if we go around to the cab... Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of detail in the cab, but again, this is quite an old loco. Um, we have got a proper connection to the tender, though, as we can see, because also the tender does pick up power. So we have got a nice electrical connection there, and this this particular connection is, is quite reliable. Um, you might have problems sometimes, but I've never really had an issue with it. Um, it's quite a reliable connection. Um, the detail on the roof, um, it's okay. Um, we've got a nice whistle there, we've got the safety valves. Um, the vents there on the cab roof doesn't move, but it's okay. Um, we've got some very nice separately fitted metal handrails on the sides. 
uh, warning signs as well. So obviously this is a, well, this depicts the loco in, in her modern, well, <laughs> mainline well, um, scheme or stage, I suppose, whatever, whatever you like to call it. Um, so she does need those, so obviously for safety. I've got more of them down the front there as well. You can see all of the sort of equipment on the side has been painted. It's really, really nice. It looks really, really good. And the pickups are a bit visible though, as you can see there. They are quite visible pickups. They have painted over them to some extent, um, but they are a little bit visible, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but I suppose if you wanted to, you could always paint over them a bit more if you wanted to, to try and hide them. Um, but at least they have made some efforts to cover them up. Um, we can see on the bottom there, um, the wheels, they look okay, despite how long this model has probably been in storage for, she looks okay. Uh, she does look a bit dry though, I can't see much oil on there, so I might have put my own oil on there a bit, put a, put, I'll put a bit of oil on that gear, um, just to ensure that um, there's plenty of oil throughout the mechanism, make sure she runs nice and smoothly. Um, but overall, she's a very nice looking loco, despite her age, um, despite, yeah, despite how old this tooling is. Um, so obviously um, my other loco, 6201 uh, Princess Elizabeth, um, is the same tooling. This t this particular tooling, um, obviously whilst it's not the best, certainly not, not by modern standards, um, I think it still has its place because it's not bad. It's not too bad at all. And the detail is pretty good and the mechanisms um, inside these, these uh, kind of locos are okay. Uh, there's no flywheel inside, um, but the motors are t generally pretty good. Um, obviously all of the driving wheels pick up, all of the tender wheels pick up. Overall, it's not too bad of a mechanism, to be honest. Um, if we put the loco to one side, we'll have a quick look at the tender. If we just bring it back into shot. So here we are. So you can see there, we've got the LMS branding on the side. Uh, you can even feel it slightly as well, which is quite nice. Um, obviously, you've got the pickups on all of the wheels as well. And that's where, that's the pin um, that slots into the connection on the loco. Um, there's a bit of detail on the front of the tender. You've got some nice hand rails, um, which are made of metal, and they are separately fitted, which is quite nice. Um, on the back, you've got more sprung buffers, um, which look very good. Obviously, if you bud them up a bit more, grease them up, they look they wouldn't look too bad. Um, they look all right though, as, as they are. Uh, more warning signs. You've got the builder's plate as well. Uh, the couplings on these are not NEM. They are not NEM couplings, but they are medium uh, style tension locks, which is okay. Obviously, a small one would be better, um, and you could quite easily change it for a small one, um, because you can buy. And these types of couplings that sort of clip in, um, if you like, into the chassis. You can buy small ones because I have bought some before uh, for some of my Mark III coaches, and they and obviously they they coat they cut a close um, couple of uh, things together and not a lot more, um, so there's not as big of a gap. Obviously, they look better. So if you want to change this coupling um, for something smaller and more realistic, um, then you should be able to fairly easily. It shouldn't be too hard to do that. Um, but overall, it's not a bad tender. Um, you have to excuse my fingerprints on the side there. Uh, but overall, it's not too bad. The coal load is okay. You could improve it if you wanted to. Um, I certainly won't be for a long time. Um, but overall, it's not too bad of the coal load. Um, there's plenty of weight to these tenders as well. That's one thing I find with these tenders. Um, is they do generally weigh quite a bit. Um, if you take the take the tops off of these, which I have done before, um, there is quite a large weight um, screwed in I mean, inside there. But at least it helps keep the tender on the track and helps it um, stay on the track uh, depending how big of a train you've got a couple behind it. Um, overall, they're good good, good quality tenders. Uh, they feel nice and robust. <laughs> they're certainly not going to fall to bits um, in your hands. Uh, yeah, overall, they're not too bad. Uh, if I just put the step <laughs> back over to one side as well, we'll very quickly um, have a look at one of the Mark 3s. Uh, we won't look at both of them because they are exactly the same. Finally, <laughs> apologies for that. Here we go, finally managed to get one of them out. But oh my gosh, that was incredibly tight. It even ripped the polystyrene as I took it out. Honestly, Hornby, <laughs> it is so, so good uh, that you got rid of this packaging, because this packaging is terrible. You can see uh, just uh, just there, uh, where the coupling is, where it's ripped the polystyrene. Uh, the top one, that is not moving. That is not coming out at all. It's so good that Hornby got rid of the polystyrene uh, trays for their packaging because it is terrible, it really is. Uh, but anyway, with that drama aside, <laughs> continuing on, uh, the, these coaches, uh, they're not too bad. Um, they got their okay, okay amount of weights, they're not ridiculously light, which is good. The um, delivery is applied really well. Um, there is some detail, it's not masses, but it's okay. Um, again, you have got um, the non them couplings, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and they are the massive style uh, couplings on these, unfortunately, um, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but if, again, if you wanted to change them, 
um, for something better, then you should be able to fairly easily. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame that they are big, massive style, um, unrealistic, unrealistic uh, tension locks. Um, but at least they do the job, I suppose. That's the important thing. They work and they work well, which is which is the most important thing, I suppose. Um, but overall, um, yeah, it's not a bad coach. Obviously, it's a typical sort of Hornby Mark III coach. Um, obviously, they've only recently started to change the tooling on these. Um, but overall, they're not too bad. Again, nice and robust. Um, they feel quality, which is nice. Um, overall, yeah, they're not bad coaches at all. But anyway, if we put that to one side, well, very quickly, if we can, if we get it out, yeah, this one's coming out a bit more easily. We'll have a look, quick look at the Mark II. There we are. If I just unwrap it. There we are, get rid of that paper. And yeah, overall, the Mark II coach is just as good. I think this tooling is an Airfix tooling, I think. I think that's where this tooling comes from. Um, and the bodies on these are actually screwed on, which is quite a nice feature. Obviously, with the Mark III's, um, these are just clipped on bodies. Um, but on these coaches, they're screwed on. And I have taken off the body on my other um, Royal Train Mark II coach, so it's obviously the exact same one as this. And I have taken the body off that before, and it is quite easy to do. And once you take out those screws, it does come off fairly easily. And yeah, overall, it's not it's not a bad coach. Obviously, it is quite basic. Um, the livery is applied well. Um, we've got a bit, bit of detail on the underframe. And the bogeys have a bit of detail on them, but again, they are quite basic. And there's not an, an awful lot of detail to them, really. And this bogey doesn't seem to want to move um, incredibly easily. I'm not too sure why. <laughs> um, it keeps locking up for some reason. Um, I'm sure once it's on the track, though, it should be fine. And um, the other one uh, is okay, though. I just don't know why this one. This one seems to be a little bit restrictive. But I suppose once it's on the track, it should be fine. Yeah, once it's on level ground, it's fine. Um, and overall, yeah, it's not, again, not too bad of a coach. Obviously, it is quite basic. But again, it feels quality. Um, it feels well built. And I suppose that's the important thing. Um, obviously, you can buy much better coaches than this these days. Um, so if you always wanted to, if you wanted to convert maybe a high quality uh, Mark II coach um, into one of the Royal Train coaches, and even do the same with the Mark III's if you wanted to, um, you should be able to repaint them fairly easily. Um, I doubt it would be too hard to do. But overall, uh, the coaches that you get in, in the set, they're not too bad. They're not too bad at all. Um, but anyway, I think what we need to do now is put the leg on th onto the track. Um, we'll give her a quick test uh, to make sure she works. And we'll get her running in. Then we'll couple her up, couple her up to her coaches. Um, I think I'll stick all of the Royal Train coaches on actually behind her. And we'll see what she's like. Now, apologies, everyone. But very quickly, before we put her on the track, I might almost, almost forgot something. Well, first of all, I managed to get the other Mark III um, out of the polystyrene tray. Um, again, it was incredibly tight, but I managed to get her out. Um, but there were a, a few accessories um, that we were stored underneath that coach. Um, so quickly, before we put the logo onto the track, um, I will just show them to you. So first of all, we have got a proper, very nice uh, headboard there. Uh, we can see there with the crown and everything on it uh, for us to put on the front of the loco, um, which is a very nice feature indeed. Um, it says that you attach it blue, using blue tack, um, which I might do. I might not fit it at all, but it's nice to have that feature. Um, so that's a very nice inclusion. And the other one, we've got some uh, very nice um, uh, brake uh, break, um, rigging to put onto the tender and loco. But we've also got a coupling there for us to put on the front of the loco if we wanted to. And there's a screw there included as well. And we've also got some buff beam detail. Um, so we can see there we've got some hoses in there and some cables. Uh, so that's very, very nice. It's not very nice that that's, that they've included that. Uh, and also, there's, you can see there's some instructions in there as well, and we'll just talk you um, through um, fitting the uh, brake ring if you want to. Um, but overall, that's some very nice inclusions. It's very, again, it's very nice that they've done that. Um, again, if you want to fit them, um, then you can. It should be fairly easy to do. Um, I'll certainly be fitting the brake rigging and probably some of the buff beam detailing as well. Uh, but overall, some very nice inclusions. Uh, but anyway, now we can finally put the leg onto the track and we'll see how she runs. Okay, so here we are. So we're ready to put the leg onto the track and we can give her a test. And whilst I give her a test, I have already uh, very quickly tested her to make sure she works. Uh, just make sure she runs fine back and forth. And I have put some oil um, on the gear that's exposed underneath uh, just to make sure that there's plenty of lubrication uh, throughout the mechanism. So once she's running, then there's plenty of oil on all the gears and everything uh, just to make sure that she's running as best she can. Um, so if we just grab her, we can put her onto the track. Um, I have put that step back on. Um, this step just here 
is the one that was damaged. Um, I say damaged, luckily it wasn't actually snapped off, it had just come out um, of the lug that it slips in, slops into. Um, so I put it back in and I've also applied a little bit of super glue um, just to make sure it stays in place and it's not going to come out again. Uh, so it's lucky that that wasn't damaged. Uh, unfortunately, what was damaged, um, I don't I don't know if it was uh, whilst we were looking at the logo in detail, um, but unfortunately the speedometer was damaged. As you can see, um, I've taken it off completely because it had snapped cleanly in half, unfortunately. Um, so I've removed it completely um, because there was no way I was going to I was going to be able to repair it. So it had completely gone. Um, so that is a bit of a shame. Um, but at least it's not going to be in the way now for when I take the body off. Um, but it's just a bit of a shame that it da that it was damaged. And um, I suppose it was just due to the loco's age. It may have gone brittle over time. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, she's not one hundred percent pristine. Um, but at least it's only something minor. But anyway, we prior to the track. Um, it's a bit awkward to do. But if we just get her on. There we are, she's on nicely. Um, I think everything should be fine. All of the valve gear is okay. I will just check actually. Um, yeah, it all looks okay. Um, it all ran fine when I tested her. So if we just put her back on quickly. There we are, that's all wheels on. Just push her forward a bit so then we can grab the tender. Um, the tender wheels were quite squeaky when I tested her. So I've applied quite a lot of oil to the axles of the tender to ensure that they're properly lubricated. Um, so hopefully um, once she's run in they shouldn't be as bad as what they were. Um, they're still a tad squeaky um, but hopefully she'll be fine. But anyway there we go she's on. Oh, she, she is still DC, she's still analog um, because she's not DCC ready. Well, if she was DCC ready then I would be fitting a chip uh, quite probably during this review actually and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but because uh, DCCing her would be a bit of a challenge um, I might do that as a fully separate video actually. Um, if, you, if you're interested in seeing it, um, I think I will do a full video showing you how to DCC one of these particular locos. Um, if I just grab the other one actually, um, Princess Elizabeth, she's just after a shot. Um, here we are. So obviously this is the other um, loco that you can get if you buy one of the Royal Train uh, packs or sets from Hornby. Um, this is one of the other locos you can get. And, they, and both these locos, they do use near enough the same tooling. Well, I say near enough, they are exactly the same tooling um, in terms of the mechanism, the motor, the pickups. Um, it's all exactly the same and um, this particular one um, has been chipped there is a chip inside the loco um, it is a bit of a squeeze inside so there's not an awful lot of room inside these locos um, but it is possible so i will show you um, how to dcc one of these particular locos um, i'll show you how to dcc this one and um, then if you want to either dcc this exact loco or one that uses a similar tooling um, then hopefully you should be able to do that but anyway let's give her a quick test She is a tiny bit stuttery at the moment. Um, she was uh, very stuttery and cutting out quite a lot when I first put her on, but she has already improved, even with just about 20 seconds of running. Yeah, the tender is still a bit squeaky. It seems to be a bit worse in reverse, but when she's going forward, she is much better. And yeah, you can see she is still quite jerky. Um, she's not great at the moment, but obviously, again, she has never been ran before, but running in should improve that. So let's get her running in. And then once she's running, we can put a couple of up to her some coaches and we'll see what she's like. Okay, and there we are. So she's all run in. Um, she's had a nice long run in both directions. I'm probably still a bit iffy here and there, but again, she is still technically brand new because that's the first time she's ever ran. Um, she is still squeaking quite a bit. So I think it's just the tender wheels, the front axle on the tender is uh, really squeaky. Even though I've applied um, quite a bit of lubrication to all of the points on the axle, um, it is still uh, squeaking quite a bit. But hopefully um, I'll be able to sort that out at a later date. But it's definitely not as bad as it was um, when she first ran. Um, still a few probably knocking noises here and there um, that, that have shown up. Um, but they don't seem too serious and I think it's just a game where she's still fairly new. Hopefully as she runs more and more she should get better and better and lost our service and everything um, every now and then again just to make sure that she's okay. But uh, no major issues uh, so we should be fine. Um, I've put all of the coaches on her, they're just out of shot uh, down that way. Um, so we've put on all three of the coaches that uh, came with the loco in the pack um, plus the buffet coach, the sleeper coach and then the other three coaches that I have which are duplicates of the ones that came in the pack. 
Uh, so quite a long rake. It's a rake of eight coaches, but I'm sure she'll be perfectly fine with it um, because this loco is uh, fairly heavy. And obviously it's a Pacific loco. That's just the wheel arrangement. So I'm sure she'll be absolutely fine. Uh, so we need to reverse her, uh, get her to couple up. Oh, she needs a bit of a hand. There we are. Coupling's just a little bit stiff, but they're fine. We just get her to come forward again a bit. And yeah, she's handling those fine. So let's get her running. So yeah, that squeaking from the tender is uh, quite annoying, but if we look past that, she's running very well. She's handling the tray with ease, not struggling at all. Overall, really, really good. But overall, she is a fantastic loco. It's a fantastic train pack, to be honest, overall. Really, really good. Value for money is fantastic. You get a, you get, well, you, just get, you get a fantastic loco, three uh, semi-decent coaches. Overall, really, really good. She's definitely not the best loco in the world. Her detail in some areas is definitely not quite as good as modern locos. Performance, almost there. Again, that squeaking is getting very annoying. It seems to have gotten worse now, I don't know why, but I'm sure I can sort that out. But overall, she's great. I really, really do like her. She looks the part. Yeah, overall, she's great. If you want this pack, I recommend you get it. And now for some ratings for the Hornby Duchess of Sutherland Royal Train Pack. So first of all detail, I've given the pack 8 out of 10. Overall the detail, it's not too bad. Um, the, the, the detail on the coaches uh, certainly does drag down the, store, the score a bit because obviously there's not a lot of detail going on with the coaches. They are fairly basic coaches, but saying that, they do the job well, they do look the part. Um, obviously, it would be nice if they'd had some more detail. But overall, as they are, they're not too bad, but they could be better. The loco itself, overall, I think is what really brings up the detail score for, for, for this pack. So overall, the detail is not too bad. Um, you have got very nice uh, metal separately fitted handrails on the logo. The livery application is really, really nice. There's no blemishes on it. Overall, it's applied really well. Um, it's a shame that you haven't got any separately fitted sort of name plates um, or a builder's plates to go on it. Although the factory applied name plates does look very good and it does look like it's separately fitted. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, the finish overall is okay. It's a little bit plasticky. But overall it's not too bad, the loco does look really good. You have got the separately um, applied headboard that you can fit, the brake rigging, uh, the buff beam detail that you can fit yourself as well. Overall the detail, it's not too bad but it could be better. And um, Obviously it would be nice if maybe some, if there was some buff beam detail um, that um, was fitted from the factory. Um, it would be nice if maybe you did have an M couplings. But overall the detail is not too bad, again the loco does look really really good when it's running. Overall no major problems with it. Uh, the performance I've given 9 out of 10. Overall the performance, it's really really good. The loco runs really smoothly. I'd say my only complaint with it is just, is just the noise. Obviously I know noise technically isn't always a model's fault. Um, the squeaky wheel, well the squeaky axle on the tender um, certainly isn't a fault from the factory, it's just the way the model is at the moment. Um, obviously I will continue um, trying to sort that out, but obviously it's not a problem with the loco itself, it's just the way the model is. Um, but the general the motor is a little bit of a noisy one 
as is the valve gear and the gear train, it, there isn't a bit of noise from it. But overall, the performance, again, it's really good. It's very reliable. She runs nice and smoothly at all speeds. Overall, not a bad performer at all. Uh, the quality, I've also given 8 out of 10, uh, same as the detail. Again, overall, the quality is really good. The model is built really well. And the coaches uh, certainly feel quality when you hold them. They don't feel like they're going to fall apart. And they feel nice and sturdy. However, they are quite light. They don't weigh an awful lot. They're certainly not going to float away at all. But they do feel they do feel a bit cheap. They are very plasticky. Uh, the Loco overall, whilst it's built very well, um, it was a bit of a shame that we did have that damage step to start with. And um, those steps, they are quite fragile. So that does bring the quality down slightly. Again, with the finish of the Loco, again, it does look a bit plasticky. But overall, the quality is good. But again, most of the model is built really well. It feels very heavy. Overall, the quality isn't too bad, but it could be improved in one or two areas. The value for money, I've given 9 out of 10. Now, the price I paid for this pack was £180. And obviously, this example that I got had never been out of the box before. So overall, I think that was really, really good. But the only reason I've marked it down slightly, I suppose, is again, partially because of the quality, the tiny quality issues. But overall, the value for money, it's not too bad. I really did want to give it 10 out of 10. But overall, I think I can't quite give it that. It's mainly just because of those tiny quality issues and the slight uh, performance um, down, downfall with the Loco. But overall, the value for money, no major complaints with it, especially considering that this pack had never been opened before um, that's the, and that the Loco had never been ran. Overall, the value for money is not too bad at all. I've certainly I've, have seen these online and there are still some online now for much more than what I paid. So overall, the value for money is not too bad. So overall, that is a score of 8.5 out of 10. Overall, a really nice pack. If you want to get it, I certainly recommend you do. Um, I certainly watch out for those steps on the low because they are quite fragile. But overall, a really nice pack that will certainly be an excellent welcome to anyone's collection.